Hi there. In this video, we'll look at the chart of accounts, including adding accounts, modifying accounts, deleting accounts. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the general journal, um, storing recurring transactions, recalling those transactions, as well as reversing entries. So I'm going to quickly jump over to the company module. That's where we find the chart of accounts. When you open the chart of accounts, you get a list of all of your accounts. We're presently looking at this arrangement of accounts using display by type. There's different views. I'm, I'm always going to use display by type when I look at my chart of accounts. You can peruse the other views if you like. Um, so here's the account numbers, the account names, the account types, these are structural codes. So H means heading, you can't post to a heading. A means subaccount, which you can post to. S means subtotal, it totals all of the subaccounts. G means group account, which you can post to. You can't post to subtotals or headings. Uh, G you can post to. T totals all of the subtotals and all of the group accounts. So those do arithmetic, the S's and the T's. So you can't post to T's, they simply do arithmetic. You can't post to S's, they simply do arithmetic. You can't post to H's, serve as a heading. A's and G's you can post to. Everything else are for structural purposes. So let's quickly um, add a new account. So you can quickly add an account by using this little book here. Notice when you mouse over the book, it says Control N, so you can use your shortcut, or you can also go File, Create. So three ways to create an account. File, Create, Control N, or you can use the little icon that you're provided. So I'll go ahead and create um, one of the accounts that's in my courseware. You can create the other one as well from my courseware. So I'm creating uh, an account for my GIC. So I'll call that Guaranteed Investment Certificate. We'll be able to post to this. So it's a group account. It's not a sub account. It's not a sub category. Um, class, class options. Notice we have a number of tabs that we can choose. For class options, this is a cash equivalent, very liquid form of asset. Asset as denoted by 1000 number. So that's creating an account. I'll just choose save and close you can go ahead and create that second account. It'll be created uh, in my next lesson, but since we just looked at it creating a, an account, we don't need to see it once again. Um, now I'm gonna modify one of my accounts. Uh, again, in my courseware, you modify two. I'm just gonna go ahead and modify one. So I want to modify uh, 1060 to match my actual company. So you can simply double click on um, an account and then you're modifying it or you can use your little pencil so let me just show you both I'll just double click now I can change anything about it or you can click on your little pencil or you can use edit sorry you can use control O so three ways double click pencil or control O so uh, one little um, snag here is you do not want to modify this field here. That, this is only to select the account. You want to if you want to change the name, you want to change it down there in this account name field, not the select field. It's a mistake I frequently make even now. So we're changing this one to be uh, CIBC checking account. And under class options, 
I'm going to choose bank and notice when you choose the class options bank you get fields that are particular to bank. So this institution is CIBC, uh, CH50 recognizes it and, and it knows the transit number already. Branch name is uh, main branch and account number. This is a real account number. And notice you can change the next deposit number and the check number here. This brings you to setup settings um, or setup forms and reports. So that's uh, modifying an account. Go ahead and modify that uh, 1055 from your courseware as well. I'll do that, but not in this video. Uh, now, deleting accounts. As long as the an account has no previous account activity, nothing's been put been posted to that account you can safely delete it so I'm going to go ahead and delete 1030 so I'll click once to select it and this is a little trash can here you can use, also use delete on your keyboard or control R and I'm done with my chart of accounts for now I'm going to quickly do one other thing and change some company information so um, I'm going to change something in setup settings, uh, the company information, that's where we find that. Um, some things you won't be able to change unless you're, you only have the home window open. So I'm going, to click, I'm going to click this close other windows, make sure I only have the home window open before I go to setup settings. So setup settings company information has all of the information about the company. Notice that we're starting. This is the fiscal year. We can change all of this stuff, including the industry industry type. So I'm just going to put uh, my name at the end here. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll be able to identify whose data file I'm working with when you hand in your work. And I'll choose OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is use the general journal to enter transactions that don't fit into these other modules. Um, and I want those transactions to happen around a particular date. So I'm going to change the session date. Again, this is the default date. So I'm going to choose session date. And my session date for this will be March 31st. So if you just use a three letter abbreviation, and then of course the date, you don't have to enter the fiscal year, that'll be assumed, coming from the actual fiscal year that we're working in. So you can just enter a three, digit, three letter abbreviation, and then the date. That's my favorite way. And to double check that you've entered it correctly, you can click on your little calendar. That's indeed March 11th, and I choose okay. It gives me a little warning. This is based on our system setup. So I'll just choose OK. Prompts us for a backup. I'm going to say no at this point. I will show you how to backup later on. It opens up the checklist. So you can basically, um, once you've uh, passed a certain number of days, you want to go through these checklists. We'll look at that in more detail later. And it opens up the daily business manager. Again, this is all determined by our system settings. And I'll close my daily business manager. Now we're presently using um, accounting terms, but if someone's not familiar with accounting, they may want to see different language in their interface. We can find that setting in user preferences. So set up user preferences. Notice we're presently using accounting terms, but if you can, you can toggle to non-accounting terms and you'll see the difference here. So customers and sales, suppliers and purchases, and you'll see um, some differences in the actual transaction screens as well. So for example, um, the word post will be changed to uh, process or record or something like that. I'm going to go back to accounting terms. So if you see different language in your interface than what I have or what I use in my instructions, make sure you switch back to accounting terms. 
can. Okay. Now let's enter a general journal transaction. There's a number in my notes. I'm just going to enter one. Um, you make sure you enter all of the other ones in my notes as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create um, a loan payment. That's something that we can handle in a general journal transaction. So it's in the company module, general journal, and you can just click right on general journal and you get a general journal transaction screen or you can click on that little black arrow and create general journal. Whatever you like to do, you get the same result. All right, and the source, this is a loan payment. Again, this is from my resources that I shared via my Moodle. And the date is March 3rd. So you can just type in MAR3. I'll use my calendar to be a little bit more obvious for you all. And we'll be debiting the, the loan. So if you scroll down, uh, let me just go back to this. Um, to find the account that you want to affect, you click on this little magnifying glass and you get a list of all of your accounts. So we'll be debiting our loan. Uh, that should be a liability, which is the 2000s. That one seems like it'll work. And our loan payment is $280. Under my comment, I'll just go pop back up to my comment here and enter semi-monthly loan payment. Now, in addition, so basically we'll be um, paying the amount we owe plus some interest. So I'm going to debit my interest expense as well. So I click on my next line and find my interest expense, which should be down in the 5,000s. Should be, there it is, interest and bank charges. If you already know the account number, you've, you've memorized them, you know all of the account numbers off by heart, you could actually just type in 5690. And the debit amount is just the interest amount. So I'm going to click back on this credit and press delete on my keyboard and go back to my debit. When we pay interest, of course, that's the debit to the expense. And it's 38.65 in this situation. And then finally, I'll credit my bank account, the bank account I'm using to pay this loan. In this situation, it's our... checking account the one we modified and you'll notice that it, the system quickly adds our debits up to match our credits uh, presently nothing's in balance until I leave that field so if I hit tab on my keyboard or click away now everything's in balance now we pay we make this transaction every two weeks or twice a month I should say so I want to store this so that we don't have to make this entry or remember the day that it happens on. The, the, um, the date will automatically be advanced. The accounts that are affected will already be entered. The source, the comment, and the amounts will already be entered if we store this thing. So anytime you, you have a, a transaction that happens at regular intervals, and it always affects the same accounts and the same amounts, it would be prudent for you to store that as a recurring transaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I do that with this little button here. So it's supposed to be an arrow going into a box or something like that. And notice that there's a shortcut, Control T for transaction, I imagine. It grabbed the comment for the name. It allows, allows me to choose the frequency. This is gonna be semi-monthly as opposed to, notice we have weekly, bi-weekly, and semi-monthly, and okay. So I'll go ahead and post this. 
add, okay. Now I want to recall that, imagine that it's two weeks later and we're paying that loan again. So we just use the recall button. Shows us a list of all of the transactions that we have stored for the general journal. This is module specific. We only have one so far, so I'll just use that one. Notice the date changes to the 17th. Everything else remains the same, and we can go ahead and post it. And yes, and okay. Now, um, in this situation, we realized that we had entered that transaction in error. The uh, loan payment that we posted for the 17th was actually superfluous. We had already paid our loan off. So we want to reverse that transaction. So in order to do that, I, what I do is I find the transaction and then I delete it. So there's my little delete button there. It's grayed out right now because I don't have a transaction in front of me. So the little glasses allow us to find, find previously processed or posted transactions. So I'll click on that and it happens between the 3rd and the 17th. So I'm just going to choose the 17th. We already know the date. And OK. Shows everything that happened between those two days. This is the one I want. I'll select it. There it is. And again, it turns out that we had already paid off the loan. We didn't need to make this pay payment. So I'll quickly delete that. And Yes, and OK. I'm done with the general journal. I'll close this. So that's manipulating accounts via the chart of accounts, as well as using the general journal with recurring transactions and reversing those transactions. Thanks so much for watching.